Hey everybody, it's Chris with Out West with Chris, and today I'm here to chat with you about a do-it-yourself fishing kit that you can throw into a bug out bag, a get home bag, a 10 day bag, a hiking bag, or whatever you want to call your bag. A fishing kit that you can put in there and use if you're in a survival situation or a bug out situation, any of those types of things. The kit's gonna be small, it's not gonna take up a lot of space, but it's gonna give you the basic essentials you're gonna need to catch fish. When you're in a survival situation, you need to worry about a few things. You need to worry about water, shelter of some sort. The other thing you're gonna need is a source of food. You might have some freeze dried food, you know, some sort of food source in that bag to kind of tide you over for a few days. But if you have to go longer than a few days, being able to harvest or trap or fish for other sources of food is gonna be a critical skill. But you also need tools to, to get that stuff. Uh, whether those tools are knowledge-based stuff, like a, a book to help you identify edible plants in your area, whether it's you know cordage or other materials that you're gonna to need to make a snare to catch a small mammal, or the materials you're gonna to need to catch fish. What I wanna talk about today is something that I've assembled, and it's specific to my area that I would be bugging out to, and the areas I would be passing through in the process of bugging out. So this is a little kit that I just made. A few key points that I think you need to take into consideration is pack more hooks, less lures, and rely on nature to give you your bait. It would be awesome to be able to take a whole tackle box of lures for different types of fish that you're gonna encounter. And it'd be great to, to be able to take, you know, salmon eggs and power bait and stuff like that with you. But the thing to keep into consideration is these, you know, you're gonna use them up and they take up a bunch of space. But lugging around this thing, it's gonna be a piece of cake. So one thing that I want to urge you to do and suggest you to think about is using what nature will provide in order to catch fish. Take a few lures for sure and I have a few in this kit but also take a bunch of hooks and catch grasshoppers, catch moths, catch caterpillars, dig up some worms, you know use leftovers from fish that you catch as bait. Fish will eat fish guts. It's not something they're not gonna do. Catch some live bait, catch a bigger fish, eat a bigger meal, and have more energy. So to start out, we have uh, the Altoids tin. And the next thing you're gonna need is fishing line. You wanna keep in mind where your bug out location is gonna be. So this video is gonna be different for everybody. You're gonna to wanna to consider in that regard is the line that you take. If you're fishing for bass, you're probably not gonna want you know, a six pound or an eight pound test. You're probably gonna want something a little bit uh, beefier that can withstand a decent sized fish. For my purposes, I'm gonna take stuff that's more suited for trout, and you could always take two different um, sets of line as well. So you can make one small spool, as I'll show you, for trout, like a six pound test. And you can take a 12 pound test uh, for larger fish that you might be going after. So to make the spool, get some sort of hard cardboard or something like that. Make sure that it's about the right size. You don't have to be precise. Cut it. Then I'm gonna create a couple notches on each end. And this is just gonna help keep the, the line organized. So here I have um, the cardboard. I'm also gonna cut a slit in one of these ends so that I can keep the line in there. And I'm just gonna start rolling this line onto this little uh, spool, essentially. Now I'm not gonna fish with this spool. In a bug out situation, in my bug out bag, I'm not gonna have a fishing reel in the bug out bag or a fishing rod. So I'm probably just gonna hand line stuff. If you can, you can also get a nice long um, stick that's not gonna snap and you could notch it and tie your line onto that. I'm gonna take a pretty healthy amount of line with me. At some point, the line could break or snag on something. 
So having more than you think you would need is going to be a good thing. So what I'm left with is, you know, a decent amount of uh, fishing line that I can place right into my Altoids tin and not take up a ton of space. In order to protect the line from hooks and other things, feel free to cut another piece of cardboard and, you know, place it in over the top of um, your line. Just a precaution to, to keep your hook, your line from getting frayed on, on a errant hook. One thing you're going to want to take is some split shots, some weights. One of the reasons why you're going to want to take the, the weights is if you're just throwing some bait on a hook, it's hard to get distance with that unless you have some weight to it. And my thought, I would be hand throwing a weighted line with a hook with probably maybe a grasshopper or something like that on the end of it. So I'm going to take a decent amount of split shot of different sizes. What you can do is you can actually create a small pouch or container that will hold up to hooks to store your weights in uh, primarily while your kit is sitting idle in your go bag while you're not using it. And you can also utilize it while you're actively bugging out or surviving or whatever. So what I'm going to do to create that, I'm going to take a paper towel roll and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to take one end of the cut and I've got some, some Gorilla tape here and I'm going to tape that one end. Then I'm going to take um, the open end, my pouch, and fill it up with the, as much of the split shot that I want. And then I'm going to seal up the other end. Uh, it's not going to take up very much more space and it will keep your stuff a little bit more organized. So the next thing you're going to want is hooks. And for me, I'm going to want, um, you know, a decent variety. I'm not going to want a whole uh, bunch of different types of hooks. But being that my primary target is going to be trout, I'm going to go for a smaller size hook. This is a size 8. This does have the leader on it. Um, you know, if you want to deal with that, you can. Um, you can cut off the, the leader portion. So these are some number 8s. I'm also going to take some size 6s, which that's a little bit big, but it'll still work. And to keep them from cutting up your line, keep them orderly. Uh, one thing you can do is take like a, a paper plate, cut it kind of thin, um, about the length of the tin, maybe a little bit shorter. From there, you can take your hooks and just place them onto the, the little piece of cardboard, like so. After that, get some duct tape, or this is Gorilla tape, doesn't really matter and just stick that over that piece of paper plate and fold the edges over or trim the edges however you want to approach it. As you can see I now have a nice secure spot where my hooks are stored. Now this isn't going to last forever because as you take it off the the tape's going to lose some of its tackiness so you know you won't be able to use it forever. At that point you can take uh, you know a piece of cardboard and just stick it into them um, as a means of storage. Uh, this will work. It's a little thin for that, but uh, it will work for that. Uh, for now, being that I'm not actively using it, um, this is going to work just fine for storage. Alright, so I have some trout hooks. Being that I live in an area where there are a lot of bass, and I'm going to be passing through that area during my, my bug out process, I'm also going to take a few larger hooks that I can use for bass. You know, these smaller hooks, you can you can hook bass with them. There's no shame in giving it a shot anyways if that's all you got. But the larger hooks are going to work a little bit better for bass. And something like this, you know, if you can find a big old earthworm, um, hook it on there. I mean, you could Texas rig an earthworm, right? Or wacky rig an earthworm for that matter. Um, it's probably going to ball up, but you could give it a shot. Why not? You know, you can also take flies. Flies would be difficult to fish with because you don't, you might not have a weight or a way to get them casted out into an area. Um, if you're by a stream, you could always throw them out with your, your improvised rod and let them drift. I've caught fish on my fly rods with uh, an ant 
and just standing over a wood pile and dipping an ant into the water. So a fly, it's not going to take up a lot of space and it could be a useful lure. With that said, you can take a small hook, put a, a you know, a butterfly on it, uh, a grasshopper or something like that and do the same thing. Just dip it right in the water. I am going to take a couple of lures and I'm going to take lures that are, you know, multi-purpose, more than one type of fish will go after them. Uh, for me, that's a cast master. I use them a lot for trout fishing, but you can use them for like smallmouth bass um, from time to time. You can use them for a wide variety of fish and you don't have to reel them in or uh, pull them in or however you're going to bring, bring them in quickly for them to get the action um, that will entice a fish to bite. Pick the lures that you're comfortable with, that you've had good experience with in the areas that you're going to be around. For me, I'm going to take two different cast masters. One of them is a plain old silver one like this. And the other one is the copper or the bronze uh, smaller uh, cast master. So I've got two cast masters. I'm going to take a couple of swivels just to be safe. I'm also going to take a couple of uh, flies and these are woolly buggers. I've had good luck in rivers and lakes with trout with woolly buggers and retrieving them extremely slowly. Like I said before, you want to customize this to your area, the area you're going to be passing through and staying at or the area you're going to be in, in your survival situation, and the fish that you're going to most likely encounter there. And also what you're comfortable with. Uh, if you want to pack your tin or two tins full of lures, by all means go for it. This is just what I'm taking. So let's pack it all back up. As you can see it fits pretty nicely in here. I've got plenty of room for all of this stuff and I have room to add more um, as I think of more stuff that I'd like to add. Probably a couple different larger hooks. And then I can seal it right back up. It's small, compact, doesn't weigh a lot and it will get the job done. So hey folks, I'm not a professional survivalist or anything like that. I'm just somebody that dabbles in it and I think about it. And I was able to put this together, um, you know, on my own. You can do the same thing. It's super simple. Why not do it? If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Let me know what's in your tin when you make it. Tweet at me a picture of your survival tin, what your contents are. You can find my Twitter information in the description below. So if this video got you thinking or you just enjoyed it, you thought it was a decent video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. More great content on the way. And as always, thanks for getting out west with Chris.